Hey, so what's going on guys? Me here with Director Reviews and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be revisiting the Race Chip Ultimate Connect, which is this uh, little box I right, have right here and I've actually removed it to actually show you guys how it looks like. Alright, so how has it been since I've installed it about three months ago, three to four months ago and uh, the gains or so-called gains that I've gotten with this race chip. So at the end of this video, I'm going to be telling you guys whether I think race chip is worth it or not and whether the gains are actually even substantial or almost minimal or any at all. So stay tuned as we begin the review of the race chip ultimate connect. Alright, so before we begin the review, of course, a sub to the channel would definitely be awesome and also ding the notification bell so you can get notified on the latest videos which I post. Alright, let's get back to my user experience after installing Raceship Ultimate Connect. Okay, of course, I have to say this that I got this at a pretty good deal but even at that price, is it worth it? So I bought it for around 1,800 ringgit, roughly at a ballpark of 1,800 ringgit. And uh, the original price of this actually uh, is 4,000 plus ringgit which I think is a very big amount for a box like this. So since I got it for 1,800 ringgit, I decided to make the plunge and actually purchase it for my Sioko 1.4 TSI. After installing this for about two weeks, the car started to jerk very violently anytime I gave it gas. So, I went to Race Chip Malaysia, I contacted them and I said, why is my Race Chip behaving like this? Because I, when I took out the Race Chip and I put on the dummy plug, it didn't give any issues. So that means it was the Race Chip Connect problem. So they asked me to bring it back and when I went there, they actually found out that the connectors, because there are three different connectors to three different sensors, were reversed, were in the wrong order. So I said, okay, that's fine. Uh, and also they gave me uh, the latest update to my Raceship Ultimate Connect. So this is on the latest firmware, along with uh, the proper arrangement for the connectors. So I was like, okay, let's give this another try. Okay, so I came back, I drove it for a couple of days and I decided to actually do a test run. So let me show you the results of my test run. All right, so to ensure that my test results were more or less accurate, of course this is not a scientific test, but more or less accurate, I actually used this Luffy XF to redo all the tests again because at the first run, I did not have the Luffy XF. So it was like using my stopwatch and my phone to calculate, which is very, very inaccurate in my opinion because it varies every time. So I decided to use the Luffy XF because it's the most accurate because it's plugged into the OBD2 port of the car. And of course, ideal weather conditions, which is not too hot, and not at night, it was like in the more or less cooling kind of weather. And of course, in between runs, I did let the car rest. So these are the figures. All right, so you can see right here on the race ship test, there are a couple of modes, of course, I did cover that in the review of the race ship. But anyways, here are the results. So you can see the ones on the left is run number one. So in sport, 7.32, in race, 7.30, which is, Okay, I should say yeah, some improvement and when I took it off, which means I actually took the module off, I was getting 7.52. So you can see the increments is uh, average, it's not even a stage one uh, increment. Alright, so I said never mind, let's do a second round. So this is where the results were really, really mind-boggling, I should say, like why did it even become like this? So on sport mode, it was 7.26. Race mode, it was 7.24, which is, yeah, pretty fast. And when I took it off, it gave me 7.24 as well. So, I mean, where is the increment? Where is the increment that they claim on their website? So, this is what puzzles me. So, I decided to do a third round. So, I know that 7.24 is, yeah, when I take it off. So, that's the best already. So, I went ahead and did another third round, which is this one you can see right here. 7.24 on spot and race was 7.42. You can see the difference. This is where my engine started to heat soak a little. I guess I didn't wait that long enough, but you can see roughly where is the maximum and where are the minimum numbers uh, in terms of uh, seconds. So when I turned it off, I was also getting around the ballpark of 7.24 seconds when I took it off. So I mean, where are the increments? That's what I have to say today. Like, where are the gains? I mean, 
if you're going to pay full price for the race chip ultimate at 4000 ringgit you should just go ahead and get like a stage 2 tune or stage 2 plus tune even with a downpipe with a tcu tune you're going to be paying around the same price as a race chip ultimate connect so i decided to go ahead and ask a couple of friends who were actually using race chip on their civic fc on their volkswagen jetta and see what they said about race chip and what i heard was that they were facing the same issues as what i was facing uh, number one they were losing power in fact on race chip and uh, that's something that i felt was happening when i installed race chip of course i would love to have your comments and feedback on race chip as well in the comments um, if you have faced any issues with race chip but personally for me i will not be buying race chip again people have felt gains from race chip especially when they installed race chip xlr and that i can say yes because race chip xlr is actually a throttle controller indirectly it's actually a throttle controller it's linked to your accelerator pedal it has a couple of preset modes the sensitivity basically is changing the sensitivity so i think if you want to go for race chip I would suggest you to go for the race chip XLR instead and meddle with the sensitivity of the throttle because yes, for continental cars, there's a bit of a dead spot in between the accelerations. So when you touch it slightly, you don't really feel the oom. So race chip XLR would definitely change that. But if you're looking to boost up your horsepower and torque and sort of fool the ECU into thinking that it's not giving enough boost and so on and so forth, I suggest you to just go for a remap. Yes, I know a lot of people are scared that they void the warranty, you know, there's a reset counter and all on the ECU. But if you really want gains, you really want to pay money and see improvement, I suggest you just go for a remap. There are many good brands like Revo, APR, Project A and so on and so forth. There are even some uh, small uh, independent tuners as well, like DP Tune uh, and so many more. I have, I've forgotten the names at DNA as well. Those people will actually do the dyno for you and show you the increments. But from my butt dyno, when I'm using Race Chip Ultimate, I honestly do not feel any difference. Uh, in fact, I feel response wise on the low end, I feel that without Race Chip, I'm getting even better response. Uh, I'm not sure that's whether me just thinking about Race Chip that way, but I've tried it a couple of times and I asked some friends to sit with me as well and see the difference. And they felt that when I just touch the pedal slightly, there's better response or better pickup, better torque and g-force when race ship is not connected. So I mean, yeah, it's a real irony that I spend money on something that reduces performance on the low end. But of course, when you're talking about high end, especially when you're on race mode, yes, there is some, some difference. There's some difference, very negligible, not worth it for the price at all. So not to this race chip or anything. Of course, there are people who like race chip. There are people who say the race chip works. They are good for you. If race chip works, it is great. But for me, so far on the cars they have installed it on, or even friends' cars as well, friends' reviews and feedback to me, yes, this is the problem that they are facing. Even with the latest race chip models, uh, they are still facing the same issues. So I'm not sure what is going on, but for me, going for Honda for my Honda, that is a custom tune that actually gave me way more performance increments than the race ship which cost the same price as the stage 2 tune so you be the judge of uh, what you want if your car is still under warranty you want a, probably a slight boost in power spend the money go for the race ship XLR that would definitely give you much better pickup much better throttle response I think that is what many people want they want the throttle response um, and actually a race ship XR would do the job. So that's what I have on the race ship Ultimate Connect. You can see I've actually taken it out right here uh, because I'm actually no longer going to be using it. I'll be actually getting a uh, custom tune done on my Zioko later on in a couple of months to come. Of course, I do need to get a downpipe as well, which is on the way. Is this worth it? I would say a big no, in my opinion. Um, well, race ship disagrees. They can actually contact me regarding this, but in my opinion, I wouldn't spend the money to get something like this and I would just go for a custom tune. I hope this video gave you enough information to actually make your purchase decision. And uh, I'm not against race chip in any way. I was not sponsored, of course. Of course, I did buy this with my own money. So I'm giving you an honest opinion from a user. Alright, so thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.